Hi, ik is Marvin en ik is een mens bij JGF. If we kill a mini in Kulu, welcome to the humans of JGF, a JGF holiday special highlighting the brilliant minds behind our vision and today we have a special guest this guest good people has a special place in my heart because he is a fellow theater nerd yes. he in another life and i would be part of the glee club yes we would have been taking on the stage in all our nerdy glory oh it my. is marvin weavers hi marvin hi my tubs. oh my god what an introduction <laughs> eh? how are you good good it's been a day but i'm doing very well thank you how are uh, you how's good, your day been good good very interesting very it was a full day like full of goodness full of all succulents and oh. and, 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 and and always good doing work with the team Definitely. marvin for those who do not know where you are from where are you from so i'm originally from alsis river in cape town it's a small suburb um north more of the cape flats mm. um, but yeah grew up um born and bred in alsis river Okay, lovely, lovely. Currently staying in Kells River, so I'm keeping it within the river. Within the river. <laughs> keeping it, you know, river bound. Yes, river yes, bound. yes. So you are our selections administrator. Correct. What does this job entail? Sure. Um, what a question. Um, at the moment, <laughs> my fingers in every bit of the team. But what it basically does is supporting and making sure that all administrative things for the selection department is being taken care of. Mm. Um, so that is from the beginning where candidates apply from supporting them from the eligibility mm. to through the application, mm. through interviews. Mm. And there's always these administrative administrative things that needs to be taken care of. Um, who's the first po- person that they um, that they come in contact? It's me. Yeah, I'm helping them with things that they are not clear with. They need to they uh, the application because the application and all our different parts of our entire getting into our program is so big that they need the support. They need to be carried through. And I. And that support. Oh, them. come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wish people could see you. I am that support. Please. Yes. Owning that with complete uh, pride. And I I suppose that is the JGF way, right? Yes, Whatever yes. you do, you do it with your chest. Yeah, yes. You do it with your yeah. arms open. Yeah. You do it with uh, 100%. Uh, receptiveness and now because we are in this teaching fellowship Marvin we need to take it back all the way back to school where you tell me your earliest memory of being at school sure um, so my earliest memory um, so there's I mean there's a lot of memories that I can bring up from school but there's <clears throat> One specific year that um, for me is that I'll carry through my entire life. Mm. And I think that was, um, so I'm not going to go too early. I'll go a bit, let's say grade um, six, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so obviously I come from a very disadvantaged background. Mm. Um, there's a lot of gangsterism um, and peer pressure from all kinds of things um, in my area that I grew up with mm. um, or grew up in. Um, and... So primary school was it was hectic, um, they, and also being at that age, um, grade six, that's standard four, that's the old standard four. Yeah, um, that's where the um, pressure starts from. You know, from all kinds of things like gangsters wanting to rope you in, wanting you to start selling weed. Um, so that was a difficult year. Well, I had a mother that year would beat. <laughs> Me, if I had to get involved with any of that, yeah. but I, it was just it was a year of a lot of pressure, mm. and also not um, not focusing on school. I had this teacher, um, Mr. Julius who believed in me that I can be anything. And he gave me this opportunity of just, look here, the world is out, the world is yours. You just mm. need to take it. Um, I mean, all the teachers, not, not that no one believed in me, but he was the one teacher who believed in me. He was the one teacher who was, was like... He was deliberate in expressing his belief in you. 
I mean, I wasn't even a prefect. Um, I had to be. The, he would give me task to do as a, I don't know how old was I. I can't remember the age, but t- task in the class. I mean, as simple as this. Um, can you go photocopy this? It made me like there's someone that is looking at me, that is acknowledging me and giving me something to do, and mm. so. He played a massive role also because I didn't have a father. So he was that fatherly figure to me and made a thing of being there for me um, and supported me throughout that year. Uh, and he was the one who vowed that I become a prefect. Sure. He was the only, and he said, I mean, years later, we had a conversation about that. Um, and he, even that year when I became, because I, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to be- become a prefect, but that changed my whole outlook into life and what school is. Yeah. Um, so that is that memory. Uh, yeah, it, I'll taste it forever. Just that there was someone, there's a, there's a teacher that believes in a child that, I, I don't get that this bit. It's always good to say it in Afrikaans that, he matters as well, man. He matters as well. And yeah. he can gaan iets bewoord, um, iets yeah. bekom. He's yeah. not just going to be the boy from Elsie's River that's going to end up becoming a drug addict, end up becoming a gangster. There is more than, there's more to Marvin than just coming from the flats from Elsie's River. So, yeah, yeah, that is just something that this teacher believed in me um, through all my difficulties uh, through school and where I grew up. And it was just, it was a force um, in my life that I will always, always treasure with me. Yeah, yeah. And tying in your story when you say that you knew you weren't going to be prefect, why did you believe that you weren't going to be prefect? And tie that answer, please, with then defining what kind of learner you were in high school. So prefect is always, you know, the prefects were always, there was a certain class of you had to be, you know, I mean, my mom took very good care of us. So yes. we, we were dressed well, we were well mannered, but at school, you're completely different from how you're at home. And when you go to school, your mom doesn't know the type of person that you're Which at you school. Mm. So I was completely, I was a, yeah, yeah, I was a naughty boy at school. And define just be- naughty, define naughty. Um, always talking, not <laughs> doing homework, um, just <laughs> creating chaos in class, always talking, it would always be mom. Marvin, 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 the teachers would, yeah, my primary school years were hectic. Um, and then there was always the boys that did their homework. Um, they were just, if the teacher um, asked him to do a task, it was done. So there was always a certain class or group of mm. people that were, you could see that they were the, the let's call it the teacher spit. Mm. They were the people that were going to be prefect. Marvin was not close to being on the line. He was not close to being, um, even when we had to attend certain things at school, if they were, let's just say there was an outing, I was always the one that, um, teachers didn't care but if, 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 I, if I can say it like this Atlantic, teachers didn't care about me P- teachers was just like um, besides Mr. Julius yeah. um, there was always the, f- the, the, the favorite group or the boys that who's the kids that's going to become prefects you could clearly see from a young age that or even in class like they're going to be prefects next year mm. you're not going to make it because they're in a different class how they are being treated and how you're being treated that just splits that they are the ones that's going to become prefects and not you. Yeah. So just that, it was it was quite clearly fine by just the accents of the things, the small small things, small things that were done, and also how they behaved. I mean, I was actually I must say I was I was a bright boy. Um, I was quite bright. Like in my maths, we were always we were always three um, three pupils that were. So the one name is Vion. Um, Vion is actually uh, famous in when I s- Vion is also it's a drag queen Manila Von Tees, who mm. was on um, Is a Got Talent. So Vion, um, Edwin, and myself we were always the three up against up against each other in all our classes from literature to from English Afrikaans to maths. Um, always, always up against each other. Um, but you could always see that there was going to be a a there's a clear group of people who's going to become prefix, and I wasn't part of them. Yeah. And how did that make you feel though? Um Yeah, it, so the other part that it made it, it was a weird feeling, but I also had friends. My friends were even though I wasn't going to become a prefix, my they were all my friends that were going to become prefix. So mm. I was still I was surrounded by the boys um in the class that the good boys that was doing well. So um yeah, it, it wasn't a good feeling. Like you know, you're young. You don't you don't really care about it. But you you everyone I think is longing to to get to that point of like I also want to be a prefect. Yeah, because yeah. it almost feels like it's the highest point of life. Definitely, it's the, definitely, it's, it's the pinnacle of yeah. life. 
But now we're here, yes. right? Yeah. Um, oh. People say in our big ages. Um, we are at JGF. How did you hear about the organization? So, so I know that Jake's Carvel um, Founda- not fu- Foundation, yeah, mm-hmm. um, who's always been, um, even with my previous job, um, that at the Artscape, so there was a lot of things with the with the foundation that I knew between Artscape and the Jake's Carvel Foundation. But there was one day specifically, um, I've actually applied for quite a few jobs at the Alan Gray Fund, at the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation. Yeah. Um, not knowing that Jake's was part of them. Yeah. Um, and then was one day this gentleman walked in. And I saw the shirt um, and I was like, I know this company. Mm. And I asked him, hey, um, do you work for, or is that just because, you know, people sometimes just wear branding and yeah. and he said, no, yes, he does. And he asked me like, oh, so what do you know? So I said, no, I know a bit of what you guys do. And I've always like looked out for, for just work. And I just, um, I was just curious, like what, what, he didn't even tell me um, his role or whatever. And I just went back. I remember back um, home that night and I went to go look up and see, okay, who this person is and just more about the company. And who was that person? That was our director, Jeremy Given. Oh, shout out, Jeremy. So, so I saw the shirt and um, and weeks later, I was laying in bed. I was about to go sleep and I go onto the side. I, I was just scrolling through, through Indeed um, for work. Mm. And lo and behold, Jake's Carvel Fellowship pops up. And I'm just like, no ways. Is this a sign? I haven't, I was just literally asking a couple of weeks ago, just asking this random guy who I have no idea who he is. Um, and I'm just like, this is a sign. Mm. And I'm just like, okay, I went into and I applied for the job. Mm. Um, but then they closed that position and told me that they will re-advertise a different position. And should I um, have interest into the job um, to apply? And I was like, I mean, that's another sign. Because yeah. I went through the first, I submitted my first interview on Easy Hire. Yeah. Um, and then I applied again for the selections administrator position. So the, I think it was a project project administrator before, and then they redefined the job, and then this um, selection administrator. And I was like, this is another sign. I mean, I literally, I don't know this guy from a part of soap. He walks in, I see the shirt. I was like, hey, the company he tells me about the company weeks later i'm about to go sleep i was like let me just scroll before i go sleep um, through indeed and here yeah, jake's cavil and i literally called my friend that night and i was like look here i'm a believer mm. um and i thought i was like this is a sign from god because i was going through tough times with my current or the, my previous job at the time mm. i'm just i was in the arts industry so there was a lot the arts went through a lot mm. and it was like it's time to make a move and i, I wanted to make a move um because i was studying um i'm studying I just finished my last exam, last assignment, and yeah, that came up and I applied and went through hectic interviews. I mean, I'm sure you know about all the interviews. I mean, I was, I was, I was <laughs> sitting opposite you. In fact, oh, yes, podcast, yes, together, yes, right? yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the first podcast yes. I did with Marvin was in the context of his, his interview, right? It was the mock podcast where he had to answer questions around oh uh, Jake's Havel Fellowship as an organization. This is essentially your second interview. Yes, by you. Hectic. Ah, I remember it, yeah. It was going for a day. Full circle. Yeah, full circle. I was yeah. like doing my research. I, yeah, that one. I was that, I must say from the whole interview that I was the most nervous for that. The other task I wasn't um, so nervous. I just wasn't too sure because I know sometimes I can speak very fast and I can just be, I can over, like, you know, just talk too much about a certain thing. So, yeah, but full circle. Full circle indeed. So. Now, let's speak about the different faces and phases of Marvin. These faces and phases which contribute to the Marvin that we get to experience in his full glory in the organization. Your career phases that have contributed to the person that you are. Your personal phases, which have contributed to the person that you are now. Give us a snapshot uh, of that journey. Sure. Um, so personal, I'm going to start with personal first, if that's mm. okay. So I'm... So I go into growing up and all of that? Yeah, cool. It. Okay. So, yeah, I... I'm a... 
very hard worker. Um, and I've been working since a very young age, um, I think grade 10. Um, and I've always been, if I commit myself to something, I go for it. Um, and obviously, going through high school, I know I wanted to become something. And <clears throat> I'm the only one from my five siblings who has completed high school and went on to tertiary education. Mm. And I just always knew that um, I need to do better for myself. Because not that I didn't have any role models or that my siblings didn't um, complete school. I wanted to do something. I wanted just to, you know, to m- make myself proud of get myself to a point of, you know, where I can be proud of myself. Mm. Um, so it was always just, I, I, I just, I was a very hard worker. I, had to, I paid for my for my music fees because I went to a private music school. I yeah. paid for that by myself. I worked, I had like three jobs to make sure that I just pay my, get through music school, went to university. Wait, you're not going to gloss okay. over that. Okay. Music school? Yeah, I went to Yucholambrich Music Center. Mm. That's in Peru. Um, because I, I play an instrument. I play viola. Ooh. So I played violin first. And so I enrolled at Jochel I started violin in church. And then I switched over to viola. Um, so yeah, just that. I was really hard working from, from a young age. Mm-hmm. And if I put my mind to something, then I go for it. Um, also because I know I don't, not that I don't have the support, but I've got myself to, I have to do it. If I'm not going to do it, no one else is going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was a single parent, I f- I'm four other siblings. So the struggle of having a single parent, having to look after four um, other kids. Um, and I just wanted to be different, um, not dif- different in a sense that I wanted to make myself proud and I just wanted to become something. I just wanted to be, I just didn't want to be Marvin who also drops out of the school and not who goes and work. Um, and there's nothing with anyone who goes, who finds a job, a normal casual job. But I just want, I know there was more to Marvin than just, you know, staying at Shoprite. That's, that was my first job, mm-hmm. working as a packer. Um, so yeah, that was, a, that was a thing of like always that pushes me to just go and study and through that I then had a friend um, that I met in the orchestra um, Warda whose father was a professor at UCT um, and I saw a completely different life and she used to like just take me through things to go see theater and I saw a life I saw there was I, I was now um, exposed to a world that I didn't know mm. um, the first I will never forget the first time I went to a full symphony concert because yes I've been taking lessons but I've never seen a full symphony concert and I was like what is this mm. and then how she would inspire me to read and so that was just the whole drive of me becoming who I am now you know I had a, an amazing support as a friend because I didn't read on school <laughs> Yeah. I was not into reading now, Matabo. I mean, you should um, talk about it in our stand-up um, 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 meetings in the morning. Yeah. Now I'm like an advocate for literature and reading. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a journey. I just had this amazing friend that has been like literally supporting me and my mom that's been just a force and just making her proud as well. Mm. So yeah, that is just the bit of how... Like from a personal perspective, um, how things has changed and went on to go study, completed high school, um, dropped out of my first um, first university, um, mm. dropped out of Stellenbosch. But then again, while there was like, no Marvin, this is not the end. You need to do something else. So I went and enrolled for a business management diploma. I completed that. And then Warrior was like, but this is not the end. What is Marvin just going to settle here? And then I went on to go study project management. And now Warrior is asking again, so is this the end of Marvin? I'm like, no, mm-hmm. Marvin is now going on to doing his BTEC. And so this is always her like pushing me. And it's, it's just amazing to have her as a friend. Um, she's adopted. So it's just, it's, it's just so amazing to have her as like my supporting structure. Um, and because she also comes from, we have in a way similar kind of things. Um, where she didn't have a father, I didn't have a father. She had, she was adopted, but had everything been given for her, and she just like showed me the ropes. Okay, cool. This is what you can actually do. And literally, I remember even going to university. A father would literally come and pick me up and take me to varsity to go and enroll. So it's just been yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey um, from a personal perspective. Mm, mm, what a lovely journey. <laughs> yeah, eh? um, a product of many hands. Yeah. Um, which is really a thing that's steeped into community. And speaking about community, now that you are a JGF, what surprises you the most about the organization? 
uh, sure there's a lot of things that surprises me about this organization but i think just um just before our podcast we spoke about like you know the level of things that gets delivered by the people in this organization highly skilled highly educated mm-hmm. um everyone always performing at a very high level um and but the one thing that surprised me is just the support that you have from your fellow colleagues mm-hmm. um i mean i was literally in one week into the job and everyone was like look here we are to help you you don't have to do this on your own even now that i'm like 5 months into the job there's a lot of things that i have to do but like colleagues are like look here you don't have to do this alone shout as is that support it's just it's it's just amazing to have like um knowing that i've got my colleague that i can call on i mean literally 2 days ago i told see you like i haven't done um I haven't worked on canva yet are you able to jump in and help me and she was like yes and she delivered yeah. it wasn't a thing of saying yes um and not delivering by literally mm-hmm. just like there it is i've got to you and through this whole thing of organizing the year in the event she was just like marvin you don't have to do everything on your own drop a message we i can help and just just that and just the, um the warmth within um the colleagues it's it's genuine it's literally genuine mm. um in ik weet wanneer iets genuine is hoor i know <laughs> <laughs> i know i know when people are and it's been genuine from the start warm like love it's it's a family it's a family mm, mm. so yeah Oh, I love you. Yes, yes. Now, as you know, that our candidate fellows are the north star of our organization, the beneficiaries of what we do. We partner with them um, on their journeys towards bettering, transforming uh, the South African classroom. And Marvin, from your view, when you look at the candidate fellow, what about them reassures you? that South African classrooms are in safe hands seeing that young people um are wanting to make a change you know mm. um sometimes people go for scholarships because they just want to get the scholarship and not be able to pay for their studies mm. and you know they come with various stories um but you can literally see that these people the, the the passion is there and when they talk about um i mean it, i it started this job and then we went to summit and i was blown away i think about this one guy aviwe aviwe iviwe huh? so young so passionate about what he does mm. that that alone i mean i've heard all the different conversations all the different presentations it's there it's there it's proof you don't have to go look any further they are they are making the change already they are the change yeah um and they definitely going to make a change in our in our in our educational system um yo i'm not sure if i've answered your question yeah. but but just the the passion and then this luna who, who, the, how they carry themselves yeah. as young people who've just left universities because i think as uh, for um you normally see teachers as of uh, you know young people don't normally go into teaching you always see a teacher as being an older person yes and these young 23 24 year olds stepping into the classroom and also i've got a couple of friends that are teachers the way they drive this or the pride that they have with being a teacher i know a, a friend of mine who's now a um deputy principal at Rusloff um primary it's a special school out in Strand um and used to be at another school in some um Stellenbosch mm. and on weekends the things they had to do to prepare for the for the week to going to school because it's a special school um i think i can't remember what special needs but just the way the preparation in him and the stories we had to hear about what he do um, or what he does for those children was just yeah it's amazing so yeah. it's amazing yeah so. that's so lovely amy was saying that uh these candidate fellows could have studied anything because they just that brilliant true true um and they chose this profession yeah. it's 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 passion personified 100% and i think in my first inter- in my interview i think um, in my podcast i said that this is the o- only career that gives birth to all other careers mm. and you can literally see and also i mean seeing the chats um on the whatsapp group and also um the f- when i started and being at summit um chatting to a few of them 
like just the people that I didn't know there were some candidates that I knew from Cape Town but the ones I didn't and I have conversations like you could literally see that they are wanting to make a change mm. in the communities all over South Africa I mean it wasn't just I didn't just chat to the ones that I knew from Cape Town but also the ones that are from Johannesburg wherever just you know at breakfast in the morning I would just ask random questions and just we would just have a conversation and just listening to to them how passionate they are about wanting to make a change in our educational system it's yeah, yeah mind blowing amazing amazing and this year marvin as you know our mantra which is now our hashtag is be a teacher if there is someone uh listening to you marvin and they're asking hey i've got this amber in my spirit i feel like i want to be a teacher and they're in a deep contemplative space with that question how would you encourage them to pursue this journey? Sure. It's a deep question, eh? But, sorry, I'm just getting, a lot of things is going through my head. Yeah. And it's, I'm thinking about, like, you can change someone's life. Um, being a teacher is not just, you're not just going to teach a person maths or whatever, but that person as that child has a purpose of waking up every morning because they're looking forward to seeing you. Mm. Mm. They're looking forward, they're getting something at school that they're not getting at home. They're getting the love. They are looking forward to you literally making a change in that person's life. Mm. And by just doing that, not even we're not even talking about the work that you're going to do in the classroom, by just by being there for that young boy from wherever, boy or girl, wherever in South Africa, you are going to open an entire new world to them. Yeah. You're going to show them so many things. Yeah. That would be my, my reply. Hectic. Thank you so much, Marvin, for, for your time. And after you, we will have our CEO, Julian Hewitt, who will be in studio with us. Share a memory that you have of him or with him. So, sure, a lot of memories, <laughs> mm. and it's 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 a sore time that I've obviously um, engaged with 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 our CEO, but just the one thing. Um, so in my on, in my onboarding when I started, mm. we I had to go through meeting the entire team, and I was so nervous mm. when it came to having to meet our CEO, mm. but just how relaxed he was and literally you know sometimes there's this whole hype of like hierarchy mm, 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 of like mm. oh no I am the CEO and you will treat me like a goddess mm. Julian is nothing like that humble even in person as well and it's just that that he's not you know um, like I said again going back to hierarchy and where people carry themselves um, as and I know I'm sure you know what I'm talking about Matabo and yeah. our listeners as well that a CEO has put on on this pedestal no yeah. just the most humblest guy I've ever met CEOs I, I mean they there's a lot of CEOs that can learn from this man oh goodness me the humbleness in him so yeah that for me and um, nothing is too big for the CEO to do mm. um, there was a couple of things that happened now with over um, over selection um, the selection camp and I had to let him know about things and just how I mean the CEO whatsapping you hi yeah <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, like Marvin, uh, I was things on that side. Are you sorted? Please let me know. <laughs> you know, just like no, there's always a level of oh, you need to either talk to the PA or yeah. they don't um, um, contact you directly. Julian doesn't have a PA. He doesn't have a PA. <laughs> he doesn't have a PA. Yeah, she Oh, but you know, these are some things where, like, a CEO, you don't have to deal with them. There's always someone else, maybe a director that you have to go through before you get to the CEO that doesn't directly communicate with, or th there's this perception of that's how it should be in the corporate world that people, it's first another person, and you, not, you don't always have access to your CEOs directly. And that our CEO is literally, yeah. Literally, yeah. our leadership from the GTF director, program director, Julian, our CEO, no, I'm actually thinking about it, like no one has a PA. And all through AGGP, um, actually, <laughs> actually, 
<laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Marvin. Um, having you on the team has been such an incredible wonder. Oh, you met, you came into the organization at the height of the storm, mm -hmm. the beautiful storm, which is Summit. Yeah. And you came in seamlessly. You came in, you made your mark, you came in and your presence was felt and it has been consistent ever since. Your presence is reassuring to the team. We know that when Marvin's there, things are going to be done. Things wow. are going to be okay. Um, and things are going to be done at the highest level. And I think over and above your delivery of work, the utter joy to work with you. Wow. We've been working together now on the year-end event. Um, the utter joy of just working with you. Um, I really do appreciate that. And I know a lot of team members have been, you know, watching you and all saying, it's almost as if we could never imagine a time that you weren't a part of us. Sure. Uh, the way we depend on you, the way that you're so trustworthy and reliant and, and still be so incredibly efficient, but so incredibly human. Um, so thank you so much for the humility, the excellence, the humanity, and the complete silliness that you bring up to the team. Yeah, that we know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of silliness within this man. Um, thank you so much no, for being a, a breath of fresh air, uh, and reminding us that, you know, excellence is a lifestyle. Oh. I think it's only a pleasure. I must thank you guys for just, you know, the warm welcome. Um, and it, it doesn't feel, I'm only five months into this job, but it feels like I've been part of this team for years. Mm. Literally, that's how I feel. Oh, yeah. you too, Nani. Buy a donkey, your buy a buy donkey. The tuna, you know the drill. It is Jake's Harvard Fellowship on social media. Um, when in doubt, head over to Google. Go to that search engine, type in Jake's Carval Fellowship and everything you need to know about us is articulated on our website. If you want to partner with us, don't hesitate. Let us know. Let us band as a community as we make an indelible mark in ways that matter. And that's in the education system. Betunage, the conversation must move forward. Engage us on social media. I am Mata Wutladi. And I will see you on the other side of this. Bye.